When does a transmission change a car's entire personality? Well, when the engine calls for it, meaning when an engine's power is way up high, when it's an engine that needs all the revolutions it can hold, when the vehicle's looks imply speed and excitement, when a vehicle is small enough to amplify the perception of speed. That's when a manual transmission makes all the difference. The Toyota Sarah was a tragic transmission tale, and use alliteration sparingly. It gets corny and turns your paper from an A to an A minus really quick. Of the 15,852-ish Sarahs built from 1990 to 1995, about 93% of them had Toyota's A242L four-speed auto box from the Tercel, which is a wonderful transmission for a commuter. The transmission gets in top gear as soon as is permissible to harvest max efficiency from whatever engine it's attached. And if we look at this advertising brochure, the auto box sort of makes sense in the Sarah because Toyota built this car as a lifestyle accessory rather than a sports car. Except that this is not the 87 octane 5e FE. This is the 93 octane 5e FHE, higher compression, a 7,200 RPM redline, only 15 more horsepower than the Tercel's FE engine, but the FHE's higher compression makes the torque curve feel flatter and wider, which makes throttle response feel like it has more pop. Toyota never made an NA engine as good as Honda. Toyota's specialty was always turbocharging. But with the 5e FHE engine, Toyota, in its day, got as close as any manufacturer did to challenging Honda's celebrated B16 engine. An FHE isn't as good as a B16, but it tries. And it's criminal that, the, that Toyota gave most of these adorable cars automatics, but about 1,000 Sarahs were set free. 1,000-ish got Toyota's C155 five-speed manual. And this one change transforms the Toyota Sarah from a fashionable curiosity to a true sports car. The C155 is slick, precise, and almost feels like a Honda S20 manual. There are, according to Facebook groups and forums, between 100 to 500 Sarahs in the United States in 2022. I know that's a wide estimate. Of those, we can say that maybe there's 10 to 20 factory manual transmission Sarahs currently stateside. And I own one. This is my Toyota Sarah. The car makes me very happy in an escapist way. I want to go back to the 1990s, but not the 1990s that I lived. Those years weren't as fun as I normally say they were. The closet was not fun. It's, it was never fun to listen to my high school teachers make homophobic remarks with impunity at students who ventured outside of their gender. It wasn't fun to watch other students who were brave enough to be themselves be ostracized by both faculty and students. No matter how good their grades were, no matter how athletic or kind those brave students were, the whole damn school reduced them to just three letters. It wasn't fun passing out of safety, both physical and social. That's the real 1990s. But the music was good at least, right? But what if you 
could go back to an alternate 90s, where everybody was cool and sexuality and gender didn't matter, where we all got along and there weren't cliques and bullying was not there and, and teachers empathized with you and, and, and your friends were unconditional and marching band was more about camaraderie than winning that stupid group three trophy at Giant Stadium. And in my Sarah, I can imagine a Tarantino-esque once upon a time in 95 where there was a happy ending. I sail through these five gears and ride fifth all the way out to 80 miles an hour and hold it there, passing cars and with the C-155's deep overdrive, the engine revs aren't stressed and neither am I. I hear just a buzz growl from the engine and a jet-like whoosh of wind as the Sarah's hyper-efficient aerodynamic body slips through the atmosphere. It's nice to imagine it, and it's nice to pretend. And so did Toyota, with this gentle, soft, easy shape, welcoming an optimistic future. The Sarah showed me that alternate timeline, and someone else deserves to see it too. I'm ready to be myself in 2022. So this time machine is no longer needed. My Sarah, my factory manual Toyota Sarah, is up on cars and bids right now. Link in the description. Oh, and I'm going all balls, no reserve. And I believe that all gearhead genders agree that if someone, cis male boomer, is bragging about how rare, 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 rare their car is, but they put a reserve price, boo, no balls. I know my manual Sarah is rare. And I'm going all balls. No reserve, bring it on. So now we're at the part of the video where I disclose everything about this car. Everything right with it and everything wrong with it. This is something that Doug didn't know existed. A manual transmission Toyota Sarah. This is mine. And I'm now putting this up for auction on cars and bids. So let's get the bad stuff out of the way. Come with me. I am happy to say that this is probably one of the best Toyota Sarahs in existence. I think that what was going on with these cars over in Japan is that they occupied a space in the automotive hierarchy in the same place that the Plymouth Prowler may have existed here. An odd thing made in the 90s to show off some sort of futurism that no one maybe took seriously. And then as the years went on, this became the Japanese Ford Probe, which of course is a Mazda. And most of the ones that I've seen were completely racer boyed out with a bunch of nonsense in them, gauges that didn't need to be there. And of course the oddly the odd Japanese trend of people grounding things in the engine bay that don't need to be grounded. But this, this Sarah, this phase three Sarah, oh, we'll get into that, has none of that. It's as close to as unmodified as you can come. These wheels, of course, are not the turbine wheels that all of them had. These are called Sibylla Rus. <laughs> I don't know. Thankfully, they're not crazy aggressive. They're not big with, you know, rubber band tires on them. They look at a glance like they belong here. This paint is not original. This Sarah has been completely repainted because it got doinked somewhere in its life. This, thing, this Sarah was in what I assume to be some sort of very minor accident. I am guessing what happened is, when, once we had it up on the lift, is that someone maybe ran into a curb or something like that. Um, because the uh, even though these are McPherson, there's no upper and lower control arm, it's just the control arm. Um, the mount was a little bit, eh, a little bit bent. I took this, shout out to Dave over at Whirly's Auto Body in Hamburg. Uh, he's a great alignment guy. He got this thing tracking dead, 
dead true. Take your hands off the wheel, go straight. Um, under the hood, I know we covered uh, Sarah's, we covered a Sarah before, although that was an automatic one, and the compression ratio is higher. So this thing does need 93 octane, or the best that you can get, I, I suppose you can get away with 91. Little things are different, air, condi uh, air cleaners in a different place, but thankfully, when you need to get an oil change, you just tell them that this is a 90, 1995 Toyota Paseo, and the same, takes the same oil, takes the same oil filter. So that's no problem. Battery, of course, is different. The major uh, modification is what I did. These headlights suck ass. They are terrible. Um, this was one of the first production cars when it was made in 1990 to use projector headlights. Very early technology, very terrible. Um, you will find other Toyota Sarahs that have come from Japan, people would just run their high beams all the time and just aim them low. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have proper lighting. So shout out to uh, Diode Dynamics for hooking us up with these SAE fog lights. These things are fantastic. And also we remanufactured the original fog light housings and mounted these as if these are the original fog light options uh, for the Sarah. The original Sarah fog lights are huge. They're big and they're yellow. Um, these of course are modern and white, but they're in the correct space and even the mounting, and I'll show you a picture later of the mounting bracket, or if you saw on our second channel, um, where the mounting brackets are, they're mounted in the exact place it should be. Uh, I did not, I'm running them right to the battery. It's up to you how you want to do it. I just was eager to drive this, so I just mounted it to the battery, and of course there's a fuse right there. They are controlled in the correct space where the fog light is supposed to be placed. And oh, by the way, this is the correct way to get into a Toyota Serra. Take your hand right here on the door, plop in. Don't try to just uh, uh, commit that the seat's gonna be here and you'll, uh, you'll enter the car real cool like. So right here uh, is the button that I put in, in the correct space. Uh, the diode dynamics have like a show function or a running light function. And you can go to the front of the car and have a look. Right now they are in run, running light function and I'll flip in between the lights so go have a look here's the easy way to get out of a Toyota Sarah so that once you pull up of course you pull up for it's one of the best cars to pull up anywhere in only I think a DeLorean or an Auto Zam is better and no one cares about Bricklands what you do is you pop the door and let the strut, ta strut do all the work. So, now take your inside hand, grab the door handle. Don't grab the wheel. The wheel, by the way, is not adjustable. It's stuck there. Grab the door and step out and walk backwards. If you try to first get out, you're going to be all up here in the door and that's going to look stupid. Or if you grab the, the, the windshield, you're going to... Uh, uh, no, just get out, turn backward. To close the door, don't grab the handle. Handle's weak, handle will break. Grab the roof up here, down. And because everybody from the uh, official Sarah Facebook group is watching this right now, yes, the struts have been replaced. And yes, they are the correct phase three struts. There are three versions of the Sarah, phase one, phase two, phase three. This is phase three, the final year of production, which means you get side impact beams going through these doors, which means you need heavier struts. There are people who, who have uh, phase one and phase twos who put phase three struts in and the door freaking flies up because this door is, I don't know, 20 pounds heavier, something like that. Back here, I replace the rear struts back here. You notice I'm helping it up a little bit. They are new, they are from Lift Support Systems. 
I needed to make my own little brackets right down here uh, to fit into the Toyota's ones because it's big. I have a video on my second channel so showing how I did that. I could have gone for a more aggressive strut, but there's nothing supporting this hatch. This hatch is all glass. And if I went heavier, I'd be like, eh, how much force am I putting on a hole in the glass? You can't go to Safe Light. Safe Light? Yeah, it's Safe Light. You can't go to Safe Light and say, I have a make me glass for this. Make me a curved glass that not only has the defroster in it, also your radio antenna is in this rear hatch as well. You notice there's no antenna. They put it in here. Everything that they needed and all the, the wires, <laughs> the wires are in the glass running all the way down and they're routed to look nice. I'll have to show you later, there is a partial shelf that I have here, but I normally drive with it out because it's like a door that fits over top. Oh, I'll show you later. Spare tire is underneath there. Oh, and you may have seen that the rear, the rear, the floor mats. I never drive with my floor mats in because look at them. They're amazing. I just have whatever floor mats in. I save my floor mats for car shows. The little mat here for your trunk cargo area, oddly enough, is like, there's plastic fasteners and it doesn't come out. It's just kind of there and I didn't feel like pulling them off or breaking. Speaking of things that also broke off, these, that. Phase three Sarahs, I'm not sure if there's phase two Sarahs. Phase one Sarahs I know did not have shoulder belts in the back. They just had lap belts. So Toyota put these in as kind of an afterthought, and then they put these little holders here to hold them out of the way. But everything inside the car gets baked because this car gets so hot in the summertime because it's nothing but glass. So a lot of the plastics became brittle. I have carried four people in here. The car goes very slow. And... Uh, this is not American size and it's not tall people friendly, unfortunately. Oh, when you close this, it has two latches, left and right. So once you pull this thing down, listen on one side and the other side. Now it's closed. This one does have a third brake light and also um, this rear wing here should not be body color. When they were painted it, they were painted this wing. The correct color for this wing is black, but it was repainted to this pearlescent color, which I know Ben, who's holding the camera, when we look at this car, you say, what color is this? <laughs> what color is it? Look at it. Is it silver or is it blue? It, it changes or is it, sometimes it looks green. It is a sort of in-between color. Um, I don't believe this is a, a Toyota color. I don't know what it is. At a glance, it looks okay, but, you know. Oh, sunshades. Sunshades do work. There is no... They are in good condition. All the straps, including the latch, functions normally. There is no tinting on the windows and no scratches. There is some scratches on this bit of the window as it goes up and down. Uh, looks like someone at some point had this door off. See that molding is coming loose down there a little bit. Get in there. Doesn't want to, whatever. There are, looks like, I don't know, machine screws holding this door card in. You will be tempted to drive with these things off during the summertime. Bad. <laughs> I only take these things off at night. To get them in here, you line them up, you wiggle them, you hear this thing click, and then they're, then they're up there. The seat belt, it could use a new seat belt. Uh, it looks like some previous owner in Japan took a lighter to it uh, to try to keep it from fraying. My solution was to put a little uh, J&B plastic weld, build a nub here, so it doesn't retract farther and start digging into the belt up here. The Gorilla Tape on the belt itself is for my body size. So 
to keep this thing from, uh, to keep the buckle itself from riding down to this edge and, and fraying it more. Adjust it to your body size as needed and leave it there. To replace this uh, uh, seat belt and ratchet mechanism, the whole back body panel here has to come off. And it's one of those things that uh, I didn't feel like doing. Uh, join me over there on the passenger seat and I'll show you around the inside. On the inside of a 1995 Toyota Phase 3. Uh, someone on the Facebook group, I believe, ran the VIN on this. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn. This may be one of the last Toyota Sarahs ever built. This one has no options, although I have some extra accessories that my friend Renee gave me. Um, the dome light here doesn't work and it's missing its cover. My solution was a little stick-on LED switch right here uh, as a sort of stopgap measure instead of the little light I used. Sorry, the camera turned off. Uh, both sunshades, which are up here, move and they're not binding. AC, it works. Nothing, and you will need it. You will need the AC when it's sunny out. Uh, today was a lovely day in Pennsylvania, about 70 two degrees of a high and yes I needed air conditioning on a day like this the head unit original Toyota head unit um, uh, this only has two speakers it does not have the super live sound system there are no extra tweeters up here on the dash and there is no of course sound bar in the rear the CD player every single CD I put into this it spit back out at me the tape deck does work and I've been just using a little mp3 player here supposedly this is very easy to get out you remove the ashtray you remove this and I think it, there's, there's only like two clips that hold it in slides it in and out um, radio of course does work Japanese stations and uh, you get the lower lower part of our band I'm wrong with the glove box and you will of course get a Japanese electric flare so you can't, yeah, you can't buy the, um, the, the chemical ones anymore, but most people I know have JDM cars and want to put something in their road flare holder. Just go on Amazon and buy those. I am taking my phone holder with me. <laughs> I'm not, but it does fit perfectly. This is thankfully a, this bit of plastic right here is nice and flat and smooth. So if you have a suction cup holder, holds it right there. Um, cigarette lighter is not hot, so you can just leave a charger or a Bluetooth transmitter in there uh, just fine. And I believe that's everything. Rear floor mats are, are, are clean. I clean them. Okay. Oh, all of the buttons here on the dash are not faded. A lot of people have like uh, worn out hazards and worn out defrost. These things, they're all perfect. I'll take the camera just for a second. Another modification I did down here is uh, I put a little uh, stick on. Those are, are bits of uh, glow-in-the-dark tape that I just wrote miles per hour on them because I'm not very good at doing the uh, conversions. Current mileage sitting at 75,000 kilometers, 530, uh, 75,533 kilometers. That number will go up a little bit as I drive it, but uh, I won't be driving it too much between now and when the auction is over. Forgot about this, even Doug talked about this one. The storage cubby, that's right there. I'll leave this to you because you will need sunblock for your right arm as you drive, because your right arm will get cooked because the sunshade doesn't go all the way over to the side, you will get cooked there. I am taking my tools though. I gotta make my bed. Life of a YouTuber, nothing on my walls. Here's the organizer. Here's the organizer for the dash that Renee got me. I didn't have the heart to try to stick it to the dash or drill into the dash, so right now all it's doing is holding chapstick and clear anti-itch lotion. Holds that pretty good. And my can of Nautica Voyage. That fits in there nice. 
So I'll include this. I'll just put it in the car somewhere, include it in the auction. But this, this is a nice piece of literature. The Sarah sales brochure, also given to me by Renee. Everybody who comes over likes to look at this thing. I posted some uh, Google Translate to these things. Guess you're gonna get married in it or something like that. And you're gonna, you know, have business. Check out that laptop. Notice that in the ads, uh, They featured going down the road with the high beams on. They kind of knew, at least on some level, that the projector low beams just didn't project enough. Interesting here that Toyota themselves, they don't call it a butterfly door. In the, uh, if you want to go by Canon, according to Toyota, these are gullwing doors, even though we know them as butterfly doors, so a little bit of a chicken and the egg thing. Ah, the super live sound system that I don't have. Just a regular CD and uh, tape deck. 